If you want to quickly skip to this example, skip to this duration. But if you really want to learn how to make this tool work for yourself, keep watching. So the Photoshop CC 2019 came with this amazing brand new quantitative FL, which in my honest opinions looks like the full version of the previously limited trial version. And today we're going to explore what this brand new complete box of quantitative FL can do. We have loads of examples to let us go from feature to feature and learn every bit of it. We're going to have a lot of fun. So without any further ado, let's get started. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website or an online store, make it with Squarespace. Time is of the essence, guys. And if you really want to build a beautiful website without having to worry about updating, uploading, complex process of hosting, coding, resizing for different types of screens, which eat up a lot of time, just go to Squarespace. It is very easy to build a website over there. They have responsive, modern and beautiful templates built with a great insight of design in mind. Each one is a starting point for a wide variety of projects. Whether you're doing your side hustle or promoting your main gig, think it, dream it, make it with Squarespace. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash piximperfect to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So here we are in the magical world of Photoshop. And if you want to go ahead and download this photo or any other photos shown in the tutorial, check the links in the description. So let's have a look at this. For example, you want to remove all of the flowers and the files. And we were working with the previous version of the content of FL. So I have made a copy of the background layer. If you're wondering how to do that, let me do that again for you. With the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J. Now we will work on a copy that would be a backup. All right. With the help of the lasso tool, we're going to make a selection of this. A rough selection. Just make sure you include the shadows as well. And something like that. Okay, now we'll go to edit and fill. We used to choose content aware and hit OK. Let's see what it does. As you can see, it absolutely messed up. Maybe if we would have modified the selection, it might have worked, but the new content aware fill solves all of this. So let's have a look at that. So we'll go back, control or command Z. Keep in mind in Photoshop CC 2019, all you have to press is Control or Command Z. It takes back multiple steps. You don't have to press Control Alt Z, Command Option Z, right? So you don't even have to work in a copy this time, right? All you need to do, you can delete this. Just make sure the selection is intact. Then we need to go to Edit, Content Aware Fill, right? This is a complete brand new stuff right over there. Just click over there. A whole new dialog box shows up. Now this on the right hand side is the result. On the left hand side, we have a working space. Let me take you through a quick overview. We'll get into all of the tools and the details later, right? Now, green are the areas where Photoshop is sampling from. So we don't want it to sample from the laptop. So we will select this sampling tool and we will subtract the laptop from here. We also don't want it to sample from some other areas like the hand. So we will also paint on the hand. And we can also choose to paint on these stuff, but it's already solved. Let's have a look at this. If we zoom in, let's have a close look at the result. It's amazing. Now there are lots of settings that we can play with to fine tune it. Now before we jump into finding and tuning, let's, let's try to make sense of all of this workspace. On the left hand side right over there, you have all your tools. So the first one is the sampling brush tool. The shortcut is B, all right? And if you forget the shortcut or what it does, you can also hover over it. Photoshop shows you what it does along with the shortcut. See, small explanations, right? So the sampling tool allows you to select which areas do you want Photoshop to look for samples. For example, we are replacing this area. Where do you want Photoshop to look for? We don't want it to look for the samples in the laptop because we don't want to sample from the laptop. Think of it like painting. Where do you want Photoshop to pick the colors from? Which color palettes do you recommend? Now, we do not recommend the laptop. We recommend all of the table. We also do not recommend this coffee mug and stuff. So you can paint over that as well, just to be secure, all right? See, it's getting more and more accurate. If you're getting confused, keep in mind green are the areas where Photoshop is looking for colors, where Photoshop is looking for textures and using that to fill into this area around which you see marching ants. Make sense? All right. So whatever area you want Photoshop to look from that area you paint or whatever area you don't want Photoshop to look up to, you can just subtract that. Now, keep in mind every tool 
has a set of settings attached to it. For example, this is a tool. It has two buttons, right? One setting, two setting. Similarly, in Photoshop, every tool has a setting and you can find the setting at the top. And that's why the top is called the tool bar. So for this tool, there are a couple of settings. Plus is for adding stuff. If you want to add something to this, to the palette where Photoshop looks to, or subtract is for subtracting stuff. If you don't want Photoshop to sample from this area, you would paint. Now size is the size of the brush. So you can increase the size. You can also decrease the size to make it smaller. You can also use the bracket keys to make it smaller and the right bracket key to make it bigger. You can also use this nifty little shortcut where you hold control and option and click and drag on a Mac or hold alt and the right mouse button and drag right or left to make it bigger or smaller, right? After that, we have the next tool called the lasso tool. This is a selection tool. You also have, if you click and hold, you also have the polygonal lasso tool as well. So if you want to add something to the selection or if you want to subtract something to the selection, you can do that. So right now it's plus. So if you want to add something to it, it adds. If you hold the alt or option and then make a selection, it subtracts as easy as that. And by the way, it's the same with the brush. If you select the plus, right? And then when you hold alt or option, it becomes minus and release it, it becomes plus again. If you have selected minus, then when you hold alt or option, it becomes plus. And then when you release it, it becomes minus. So holding the alt or option just makes it opposite. Let's get back to the lasso tool. We have some very important stuff to cover. Have a look. We have the regular selection options right over here. And apart from that, we have feathering. If we zoom in, if we increase the feather, let's say the feather is 34-ish. Now when you make a selection, have a look, it's soft. So it won't affect the previously made selection, but any new selection you make, all right? The next one is expand and contract. So expand and contract allows you to contract and expand the selection. So for example, if I click on contract, as you can see, the selection is contracting by three pixels at a time. If I click on expand, it expands by three pixels at a time, all right? Also keep in mind that even if you take a brush and erase stuff like that, it's gonna be very helpful later, all right? And then if you go ahead and choose contract, it's gonna add in a new selection to it, all right? So I'm gonna show you how this can be useful later. Now, next one is, as I already explained, three pixels, how much at one time do you want it to change by it's just measurement. So you can change it to 10. If you change it to 10, it expands more at a time and contracts more at a time. Okay, the next one we have is the hand tool. So hand tool allows you to just move around through the image, fit to the screen, fill to the screen, different options. Next one is the regular zoom tool. All right. Now, once you're in the zoom tool, I always like to just scrub and zoom. Make sure scrubby zoom is checked. Now, if this is unchecked, you won't be able to just zoom in. It will make kind of boxes, which is kind of annoying, right? You want scrubby zoom. Now, once you check scrubby zoom, you can hold the space bar and the command or the control. Just drag right to zoom in, drag left to zoom out. Fit screen, fill screen, same thing here as well. Plus minus zoom. You know the stuff. All right, so we have the tools done. For every tool, we have a setting, and that's up there in the toolbar, okay? And as we explained, on the left-hand side, we have the working space, and on the right-hand side, we have the preview or the result. So this is the area that we are working in. This is gonna be the preview or the result. On the right-hand side, we have certain amazing settings that we can use to refine our results. So the first one, let's add a couple of areas to the selection. So I'm just gonna add this area, add this area as well. All right, okay, as to the palette. All right, now on the top, we have show sampling area. If you just check it off, it just won't show you the green. It's just a complex name for hide. If you check it, it's gonna show, show that to you again. It's not gonna change your result. The next one we have is sampling options. Again, this doesn't change your result. It only shows you the sampling areas. 
how much opaque you want it to be, how much transparent you want it to be. So this is completely transparent, completely hidden, or this is completely opaque. So what color do you want it to be? Do you want it to be red or whatever? This is just for indication and nothing else, all right? Now let's have a look at this. What does this indicate? So if you change it to sampling area, the green area will indicate where is Photoshop looking at and where is it sampling from, picking from, all right? If you change it to excluded area, it's gonna show you which area is it not sampling from or the excluded area, everything rest. I like to keep it at sampling area and that's it. Now the next we have fill settings and this is very important. I want you to pay close attention to it because every property here is very, very important. The first one is color adaptation. The higher the color adaptation, the smoother the transition between colors would be. So if you have color adaptation at none, the transition wouldn't be so smooth. As you can see right here, it's very harsh. If you set it to default, it looks fine. Now for every image, it's gonna be different. Now if you go to very high, it would be very smooth and it will look ugly. As you can see, it has turned very smooth and won't work nice for this image. So for this image, I'm gonna stay at default. The next one is rotation adaptation. Again, the higher the rotation adaptation, the more likely the area is to rotate, to adjust to the surroundings. Which means is, if you set the rotation adaptation to full, it allows Photoshop to rotate the samples to complete extent in order to match. As you can see, it has rotated absolutely gone crazy just to match with the surroundings. This is just like asking how much freedom do you want to give Photoshop to be able to rotate? If you give him full freedom, it's gonna rotate in every way possible. You can also give it some less freedom by choosing low, and you can give it no freedom by choosing none, right? So in this case, I don't wanna give it any freedom. I don't want it to rotate anything. So I'm gonna choose none, and it provides great results for me in this example. Now we will see other examples where we need it, but for now, we don't. The next one is scale. It is simply giving permission to Photoshop to allow making the sample bigger or smaller to match. And the next one here is mirror. It is also giving permission to Photoshop to allow flipping it horizontally or vertically. So if you choose mirror, it just allows Photoshop to flip the samples horizontally or vertically to be able to match. But do you want to do it? That's absolutely upon you. You just have to check and see whether it works or not. That's the only way to find out. But I don't want it in this example, it's fine. The next one is output settings and that's one of the highlights of this tool that it allows you to output to a new layer, which means that you can have only that area which was replaced on a complete new layer. Absolutely non-destructive. You can also choose duplicate layer, which will make a copy of the layer automatically so we don't have to do it manually like we used to do before. And you can also choose current layer which is destructive. So I'm gonna choose new layer, hit okay. What happens is, have a look, a new layer is created with just that area. Press Control or Command D. If I turn off the background, you'll be able to see. So this area is in the new layer and that's it. So you can just use masks, move it, do whatever you want absolutely upon you. Let's move to our next example and here we have a picture of an apple which reminds me of pen and pineapple for some weird reasons. Let's have a look. So what's distracting in this? Have a look at this. This is coming out of the apple very much distracting and there's a reason why we chose this example. If you directly go ahead, press Control or Command J and try to just use the old quantitative air fill, what happens is you need a rotation here. You cannot sample this place because this is in this direction and we need something in this direction over here. So if you simply go to edit and then you choose fill and then you choose the regular content of air, let's see what it does. You see, it's making it pointed. Why? Because it's sampling from here, this is straight. It's sampling from there, this is straight. It's making it pointed, it's not rotating. And that's where the new content aware fill shines. So. All we need to do, we need to make a selection first of all of this area. You can always edit the selection later inside of the content aware fill dialog box. But then again, you can just start with a you know rough selection and then go to edit and content aware fill. 
Now inside of that, we will use the rotation function. So I don't know why it didn't happen. Anyway, so here we are. And see, there's the pointed thing. Doesn't matter, we will solve that. First of all, let's go ahead and press Control or Command minus to zoom out and just paint in areas where we want it to sample from. So we don't want it to sample from these areas, nor these areas, none of that area. This area is fine, so we will hold the Alt. We also don't want that area as well. So this is all fine. We also don't want this area. Okay, cool. Let's zoom in and have a look. Have a look at the result. It's still pointed. So what we can do, first of all, let's add a couple of areas as well, just like so. We can change the color adaptation to high. Let's see what it does. It's still that way. Now, here's the important part. Let's allow rotation. So if we allow rotation, let's see what it does. It's getting better. If we allow high rotation, let's see what it does. Wow, it's fixed. Amazing. Now you can try choose scale, but I don't really think we need that. Is it making it better or worse? So without scale is fine. And we can leave it at that. Just hit OK on a new layer and it will be fine. Hit OK, Control or Command D, fixed, solved. Amazing. In our next example, we're going to take it to a whole new level. Let's have a look. Here we have a beautiful monarch butterfly with a little broken wing and we need to make the butterfly happy and fix it. Let's zoom in and we're going to choose the lasso tool, right? The regular lasso tool and let's make a selection, give it some room. Let's make a selection of this broken area, just like so. Okay, next we go to edit and then content aware fill. On the right hand side, we have the result. Now, in this case, we want to mirror the sample from the left wing. So, we want to use this wing as a sample to fill up this area. And to be able to do that, first of all, let's make a selection of this. Hold the Alt to make it plus or option, or just choose plus from here. We discussed that previously. And just paint on this area. So we want it to sample from this area. Also, we don't want it to sample from these areas. So we'll just erase those. You can keep a little bit of it. That helps sometimes. And also, one more major thing that we have to do is checking the mirror option. So right here, I wanted to check mirror so that it can mirror it from there. Now it looks pretty okay, but we also have to allow a little bit of rotation, right? So rotation, we keep it high. Now this is a little bulging, but it's kind of fixing it. If we have a look, it's a little bulge over there. And we're gonna keep the color adaptation. Let's try none, let's see what it does. None is pretty good. It actually filled that area, looking pretty good, awesome. Now, once you're satisfied, you can just hit OK and make sure output to new layer is selected and it's fixed. Press Control or Command D. And similarly, you can fix this area as well. Now, there's a couple of areas that might need a little bit of reparation and that can be easily fixed by using, for example, let's say the clone stem tool. So I'm gonna create one more new layer, make sure the sample is current and below. I'm gonna make the brush a little smaller and hold the Alt or Option, click on in here and just paint on it and it's fixed. Maybe sample from here and just paint on it, fixed and done. Easy, isn't it? Now there will be times when the content of FL just gets it half right, not completely right. What to do in those scenarios? How to make content aware fill work again without having to move or jump to the clone stem tool or the spot healing brush tool. And that's where example four jumps in. Here we take it to complete extreme. Let's have a look at this. Suppose in this example, we want to remove this lady. How do we do that? First of all, let's make a selection. Now, if you're into Photoshop CC 2019, of course, you have the select subject option. So use the quick selection tool, select that or select the magic wand tool. Both will have that on the top you will find select subject. Just click on that. Now Photoshop automatically selects the subject by using Adobe Sensei and it has done a pretty good job. Have a look at it. There's a couple of things that need to be corrected. You can get back to the lasso tool and correct this area by holding the Alt or Option. This turns it into minus and you can subtract this area from there. And maybe you want to subtract a couple areas from here as well by holding the Alt or Option. You subtract that area, you subtract this crucial area. Okay, this is all good. Now let's go to the content of air fill. We can go to edit and then content of air fill. Now we might have to do a little bit of expansion. So with the help of the selection tool, let's expand it a bit so that we don't get those lines. Okay, 
All right, this expansion is good. As you can see, it's pretty darn good, right? But we don't want to sample from this area. It's very disturbing. So let's decrease the opacity to see what was there in that area. And we will use the sampling brush tool. The shortcut is B and subtract that. So just paint over it. You don't want to sample from that. Okay, let's see what the result yields. It is pretty darn good. Now, we will try different settings of rotation and color adaptation. Scaling is fine. We want to scale. That's fine. And color adaptation. Let's see what color adaptation works great for this image. Now, this means this circular happening thing means that it's processing the result. And sometimes it's just a little slow. As you can see, the result is pretty good, not great. So we can change the rotation adaptation to, let's say, medium. Now let's see what it does. I think the rotation adaptation works well. So we can also try color adaptation. Let's keep it high. Let's see what it does. Now once we make it high, as you can see, this mountain is matching very nicely. This mountain is a little bit not matching. So we will try to change the rotation adaptation to a little higher and see what happens. Now we don't want any mirroring here. Here's why. Because light is coming in one direction. If it mirrors, it can change the direction of light in the sampling areas or the areas where it's replacing and it's going to look fake. All right. So we want to keep the mirroring off for this example, but it's a directional light, especially. So rotation adaptation high doesn't seem to help. So we're going to go back to a little lower number. Let's say we go back to, we'll try low. And if it doesn't work, we'll keep it at medium and fix that area. Nope. The low doesn't work. We're going to switch back to medium. It's fine for us. And we're going to choose new LED. That's fine. And just hit OK. Now it's still processing it, but we knew that this was working. So we're going to just hit OK. So as you can see, this has given us a pretty good result. Press Ctrl or Command D. A couple areas need to be fixed. For example, this area. That's not a big problem at all. So we can use the clone stem tool, right? Let's make the clone stem tool a little bigger. We're going to talk about other areas later, and the trick is later. All right, so we're going to just uh, take a sample from this area. Right, and then if we place it here, it's we just have to rotate it. And to rotate it, you can hold the shift option and the arrow bracket keys. Shift Alt and the arrow bracket keys. Left arrow bracket key rotates it anti-clockwise, and the right one is clockwise. So if you hold it, it keeps on rotating. So this is fine. And now once it's rotated, I'm gonna just click there to place it, and it's fine. All right. Now let's zoom out and it's pretty nicely done, but I have a problem with the rocks over here. And for that reason, you will create a new layer or simply press Ctrl Alt Shift E, Command Option Shift E to create a stamp visible layer, which means that everything you see on the canvas right now is merged in one layer. Now in this one, again, we will just make a selection of the areas that were not right. For example, this area just doesn't look right. And a couple of areas which need correction. This area doesn't look right. Okay, so we're gonna just make a selection of all of these areas that don't look right. And then, again, go to Edit, Content of Fill. And this time we know which areas to sample from. So we'll just don't wanna sample from the mountains. A little bit is okay. I mean, hold the Alt, you can add this, you can add that. But we know we don't wanna sample from the sky. We'll just erase it off. We don't wanna sample from this area. And let's see how it performs over here. It is great. Now, as you can see, Photoshop is being a little buggy. That's fine. We'll just have to zoom in and see how this looks. Okay, now if I change it to, let's say high, high is fine, high works nicely. And I can choose scale as well because there are rocks which needs a resizing. Okay, this looks all right. Let's have a look at the before and after. So if we just hit okay, and if we have a look, press Control or Command D. So before this, after this, there's a little bit of improvement and this area needs improvement. So we can make the content aware work again, or you can just go back to the patch tool here in this case, and then let's create a merged layer for stamp visible layer. Control Alt Shift E, Command Option Shift and E. And then you can work in these areas, like you can just take sample from this area right here. Control or Command D. Let's select that area and sample from this area. Let's sample that, select that area, drag and drop here, and you can make those necessary adjustments. For example, this area just doesn't look right. So you're going to select that area. Where do you want to 
sample it from. So you will select this area, control or command D, and you are pretty much good to go. Now you can fine tune it as much as you want. This just makes your process so much more faster and easier. So that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Hope you experiment more with the brand new content of Airflow. If this video helped you, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.